325,000 out of your estate for IST purposes and useful for protecting your assets. It sounds great, but are trusts all they're cracked up to be? Well, as usual, it depends. A trust is simply a legal entity in which assets are held. The assets can be a wide range of things, but they're usually investments, cash, property, or land. These assets are held by either two or more trustees for the benefit of someone else, the beneficiary. The person who puts the assets into the trust is known as the settler. They can choose to also act as a trustee if they want to, or appoint others to act as trustees for them. A discretionary trust is probably the most common form of trust. The discretionary part simply means that the settler gives discretion to the trustees to decide when and how to distribute the assets to the beneficiaries. Whilst this might potentially seem a bit odd, it's incredibly sensible as often the settler is not alive when the assets in the trust are distributed. By providing discretion to the trustees, they can take into account both the settler's original wishes and the beneficiary's current situation when a distribution is made. The clue is in the name. Trusts are extremely helpful if you would like to set money aside for someone, but you don't trust them to access the assets. With a trust, you can maintain an element of control and it can help ensure the money is used as you intended. Control and asset protection is probably the number one benefit of a discretionary trust. A £100,000 inheritance to a 17-year-old, for example, that wasn't placed into a trust might get spent on a flash car and some boozy parties instead of being used for their university education and a house deposit. It's really important to mention, though, that whilst the settler can still be a trustee, once the money is in the trust, it is no longer the settler's money and they typically can't continue to benefit from it if they want to use the trust effectively. So believe it or not, on the capital you put into a trust, there are usually rather few immediate inheritance tax benefits. There is normally no inheritance tax levied on an individual's estate that is worth less than £325,000. This £325,000 limit is known as the nil rate band. Anything over this is usually subject to UK inheritance tax at 40%. And it's not that different for discretionary trusts either, really. An individual can transfer £325,000, their nil rate band, into a trust without any immediate tax consequences. Generally though, if you try to put more than your nil rate band into a trust, it will be subject to a 20% entry charge. And if you die within seven years of putting the money into the trust, guess what? The entry charge effectively gets topped up to 40%. It's why unless an asset is fully relievable from inheritance tax in the first place, very few individuals will place more than £325,000 into a discretionary trust. The precise amount that wouldn't be subject to IHT anyway. Well, there are some interesting tax benefits that could make it worthwhile. The main one is that after seven years of making a gift to a trust, it will fall out of your estate and you will get your nil rate band back. It's this bit that's key, as now you have both the money in the trust outside of your estate and your nil rate band as well. On top of this, any growth on the original amount you placed into trust isn't subject to the seven year rule and will fall immediately outside of your estate. So assuming they can afford to, and it's suitable for their circumstances, some people place their nil rate band into a trust every seven years to keep rolling up the amount of money that is outside of their estate over time. It's also worth a quick mention that some of these allowances and benefits can change if your assets are worth more than £2 million, so definitely take advice if you fall into this category. There are quite a few downsides, unfortunately. A trust is effectively treated like an additional rate taxpayer, so any gains the assets within the trust incur are subject to the higher capital gains tax rate of 20%. All dividends are taxed at just over 39% and any other income is taxed at 45%. To add insult to injury, a trust also only has a maximum of half the annual capital gains tax allowance of an individual. Just to really put the boot in as well, every 10 years a tax charge of up to 6%, known as a periodic charge, will be applied to the trust's total value. And on top of this, depending on the situation, distributions to beneficiaries could also be taxable. There's also a lot of legal fees that come with a trust, annual trust meetings, and sometimes ongoing professional trustee fees. Simply put, no. To make the most of them at all, you will need to have done some pretty careful planning, and there are a huge number of moving parts. 
Sometimes simply gifting the money can be a lot easier and more beneficial than placing the money into trust. If you do want to use a trust, first and foremost, you'll need to be certain that you can afford to. So cash flow planning should usually be an important part of your decision making process. And often, due to your age, health or some other personal circumstance, they may just simply not be suitable. So if you are considering making use of a discretionary trust, it goes without saying you really must take advice. Because remember, your money really does matter.